As Bruce said, Brock, right behind him is the four-time series champion Gene Belton from Marietta, Georgia. He's in a V8 Oldsmobile Cutlass. And qualified ninth from Jacksonville, Florida, is Patty Moise with her V6 Buick Regal. Now, Patty is gunning for that $1,000 bonus that is paid to the lady driver that finishes the highest, providing that finishes in the top half of the field. So primarily General Motors products, Camaros, Firebirds, Oldsmobiles, an interesting mix of V8s and V6s. Some feel on this very long track with its long straightaways, the V8s may be quite competitive here, even though they pack more weight. Let's go down to the pits and join Brock, who's with a very special guest. We've got a special treat today because uh, we've got a young lady here who has made her reputation in this kind of racing, Lynn St. James, who ran in the Kelly American Challenge Cup for four years. Lynn now moved on to other things, but She's going to help us a little bit. What do you think about today's race? I think it's going to be a good race, even though there's a bit of time between the cars. I think they're here to race. It'll be a good one. Okay, we're going to be talking to Lynn throughout the race, so we'll stay with it and keep your eye on the action with it. Okay. okay. Off the track, Brock and some anxious drivers in the front row heading up under the bridge where starter John Sutton can now see them. If he likes what he sees, they'll get the green flag, and we will be underway. We are. They head down into turn number one. And what a start. Look at this. Tommy Reagan's on the left side there being challenged by Craig Carter in that blue and yellow Camaro as Riggins gets the line into turn one. But what a traffic jam. Now, remember, Riggins said if Carter wants to lead bad enough, he can have it. But uh, suddenly the spirit of competition takes over, and it's Tommy Riggins leading it. Sure is, Steve, and we've got Irv Hare squeezing inside Craig Carter in that number 20 Camaro to take over second place. So Carter falls back to third place as the field sweeps down through turn three and comes through turn four. And look at that. Carter moves on the outside. Hare still holds second place, but look at Robert Overby in that Oldsmobile has started fifth. He's moved up into fourth place in this challenge. What a traffic jam as they head into turn five, Steve. And Brock, look at the blue and white number 96. That is Gene Felton trying to get around Irv Hare into the fourth spot, and he's going to do it. He sure is, Steve, as we see that beautiful blue and yellow number 56 Camaro of Craig Carter in second place. But leading it right now, the number 12 Buick Regal of Tommy Riggins out of Jacksonville, Florida. A strong V6 powered car. In fact, V6 is running first and second, the V8s in third and fourth. You're right, Steve. And look at that number 96 of uh, Gene Felton. That's an Oldsmobile. He rides up on the curb there a little bit going through turn eight. But he's got some catching up to do now on the number 26 Buick Regal of David Overby now riding in third place. Overby out of Jacksonville, Florida like the leader, Steve. And Gene Felton, blue and white 96, suddenly spewing something out of the car, Brock, it would appear. He was getting a lot of pressure from Irv Hare. Hare seeing that drops off a little bit. I don't know whether that's fuel just coming out of the overflow on those fast right-handers or maybe some body work rubbing. It's difficult to say. As we see the leader, Tommy Riggins, set up for that very hard right-hander called turn 12. Right behind him, Craig Carter in second place. And it looks, Steve Evans, as if these two guys may be starting to open out a little bit on the rest of the field. Not a big surprise, Brock, because Riggins, car number 12, the white machine, is the current points leader. And right behind him, 56, the blue and yellow car, Craig Carter, he won the championship the last two years. No question that they are going to be tough to beat here today at Elkhart Lake as we see them head up the final hill toward the finish line to complete the first lap here on this four-mile road circuit. And this is where the big horsepower maybe of the V8 should come into play and we can see right now Gene Felton in that blue and white Oldsmobile has moved into third place Steve Evans as they sweep into turn number one and Felton may have a horsepower advantage over those V6 cars in the longer straighter sections of the course Brock it will not handle as well as the V6 cars just because of the weight distribution but now you can bet Felton has got it within his sights the V8s get a little bit more displacement, a little more cubic inches, but they also carry a couple of hundred pounds of extra weight. So it's kind of a balance. Uh, do you take the horsepower or do you take the lighter weight? Right now, in the twisty part of this Elkhart Lake track, Riggins, Buick, Regal, and Craig Carter's Camaro seem to have an advantage, but right behind them, the old pro in this league, Gene Felton, he's won this thing four times, and you can never count him out. A lot of people say that Gene Felton is one of the most underrated road racing drivers in the United States, and I've got to agree, he is good. He certainly is, and he's very hungry here, Brock. Uh, he's been out of the Kelly Series for the last couple of years, uh, and is now just getting back in. Oh, and look, off the track goes Craig Carter, car number 56. Uh, but he doesn't appear to lose any ground. Felton not gaining on him, even though he bobbled just a tad. Well, 
Craig is driving very hard. We saw him punch the brakes a little bit earlier trying to get through turn 13, whereas Riggins slipped through there with no real problem. So it could be Craig may not be handling quite as well as Riggins, who has now opened out a little bit. And look at this. Felton has got his sights on Craig Carter. Well, that's certainly the race to be watching right now. That's the battle for second place between Craig Carter and Gene Felton. Tommy Riggins running out there pretty comfortably right now. He sure is. You notice that uh, Craig is using the brakes more than Riggins is in these faster corners. And as we have heard some of the drivers say, brakes can be a factor, especially with heavy race cars like this. These cars weigh in the neighborhood of 3,000 pounds with a driver and fuel on board, and that's a lot of weight to slow down. And Brock, just watching the brake lights on these cars will tell you a lot about the driver's style. You see Craig Carter punch the brakes right there. Not so the first and the third place drivers. In fact, it's the hard braking that makes Road America a very physical racetrack. It's that left leg that's mighty sore when it's over. Well, Gene Felton definitely moving in on Craig Carter. I've got to wonder whether or not Carter's car just isn't working quite well. As look at this pass. Here comes the number 96 Oldsmobile of Gene Felton, and he just blows past Craig Carter up that long straightaway. Big V8 horsepower coming into play here. And now, who's to know? Maybe Gene Felton is going to be able to do the same thing to the leader, Tommy Riggins, as he gets second place and appears to be able to hold it. Well, Gene Felton, a very strong, physical man, going after our leader, Tommy Riggins, riding in third, number 56, Craig Carter, followed by Robert Overby. Riggins gets some notice from 96, Gene Felton, that Felton may want to get around and try to capture that lead. This is the V6 car in the front, car number 12, followed by a V8, and here goes Felton, making his move on the outside. Gene Felton, with superior horsepower, takes the lead in the Kelly American Classic over Tommy Riggins. Riggins flips back into second, picking up a little bit of a draft off of Felton. Down in the pits with our special guest, Lynn St. James, is Brock Yates. Brock? Lynn, we saw Gene Felton make one of his uh, patented uh, great leaps forward. Now uh, fighting it out with Riggins for the lead, but were you surprised to see him make that kind of a start? Not at all. I tell you, I've got some of the best lessons from racing with Gene Felton. You can put him in any car, he's going to make it go fast. And I talked to him before the race, and he said that he's in a old Cutlass V8. Contenders are in the V6, and he said the sixes are faster, which he said he never thought he'd, you know, be in that position. So he's got to be just driving so hard, you know, to really be uh, to be up there running ahead of the V6. Well, he expressed concern before the race about the abilities of the old heavier V8s to keep up with these quicker and uh, lighter v, uh, V6s, but boy, he's sure making that old Oldsmobile work now. The case where a driver can make up the difference, and he's doing it. <laughs> well, we'll keep watching him. I got to agree totally with Len Brock. It's the aggressive style of Gene Felton that's getting the job done right now. Tommy Riggins is pushing him as hard as he can, trying to force him into a mistake. Because Felton is driving right on the edge as he gets up on the curb right there in the blue and white number 96. Using all the racetrack, of course, these two guys have run against each other for a long, long time. They know each other's style. There are about four or five really top shoes in the Kelly American Classic Series. And Felton, of course, is one of them. Riggins is another. And right back behind them, with a good view of the action, is Craig Carter. Craig just doesn't seem to be working that car that well. He's, as we said earlier, he's using the brakes a lot. I don't think that number 56 Camaro is handling the way Carter would like it to. Well, remember, that is his backup car as he crashed uh, his brand-new 84 car in practice. So this car may not have got the attention that it deserved as far as chassis setup is concerned. Very possible. He's hanging in there, though, as uh, we see Felton and Riggins sweep through that turn 13 underneath that bridge. And now Craig Carter right back there in third place just waiting for a mistake as the two leaders head up this long straightaway here at Elkhart Lake. Up that hill. Boy, that takes some real horsepower to get up there. And we saw earlier how Gene Felton used that horsepower to take over the lead. Steve is with his crew chief now in the pit area. Well, Tex, Gene is really thundering out there. Did you expect him to uh, move to the lead this quickly or if at all? Well, we, we made some changes in the car, and we hoped that we'd gain some on it, but we were, we're a little surprised that he did gain on it like he did. He really loves to come back to this Kelly series, doesn't he? Right. It's a real competitive series now, and uh, it, from a driver's standpoint, he's got a little something to prove, and he's doing a good job of it right now. Well, it looks like his biggest competition out there, at least at this point, is Tommy Riggins. Well, Riggins and Carter's not far back either. There's seven-tenths of a second between one, first and third. That's close. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Well, Tex Powell, a classic American stock car builder and chief mechanic, has made a beautiful race car for 
Gene Felton today as look at these two guys Felton and Riggins slide down through that corner. Riggins trying to get on the inside. Now Riggins is using a little brakes too, Steve Evans. And Gene Felton is using that rear view mirror, trying to keep his car position right in front of Riggins where he cannot get around. This is some kind of a war between Gene Felton and, oh, Riggins almost loses it. Gets very sideways. Now tries to duck down under Felton. Felton says, no, not here. And sitting in a perfect position to watch all of this is Craig Carter running third in number 56. He's hoping these guys are battling like this might take each other out of the race and put him in the lead. Look at this as they come uphill under the bridge. It is still Gene Felton followed by Tommy Riggins. Felton just won't let him around. What does Len think of all this, Brock? Len, uh, Tommy Riggins just tried to make a move on uh, the old pro Gene Felton. He got the door shot on him. Uh, that's uh, That Oldsmobile is going to get awful wide as this race progresses, I guess, huh? Yeah, they've raced a lot together, so they know each other's moves. They race very similar. They throw the pitch the car a lot, throw the car, but always in control. And so you and they know, you know, they know each other. So I think... You may see the lead switch back and forth as long as the engines hold out and the cars hold out. It's only a 15-lap race, so even though it's a long track, they may go back and forth a couple of times. All right. That's from an expert. She ought to know. She's done it with Felton as well. Well, it's 15 laps, as Lynn said, 100 kilometers, a little over 60 miles, and Gene Felton continuing to lead over Tommy Riggins and Craig Carter hanging right in there. If either one of them make a mistake, he'll be the benefactor. He sure will, as Gene Felton out of Marietta, Georgia, who really has a lot of experience in big, heavy American-type stock cars, but is an expert road racer as well, as Tommy Riggins elbows his way through turn five. Felton goes off in the grass, and Craig Carter gets by him as well. That was a terrific move by Tommy Riggins coming down into that hard-breaking area leading into turn five, and he takes the lead back from Gene Felton, who went from first to third in a match. A very strong fourth place. Right now, Gene Felton, the old pro in that number 96 Oldsmobile built by his pal Tex Powell out of Marietta, Georgia. And you've got to feel that this guy is going to be a factor in this race. He really, really knows how to run these big stock cars. Well, he led it for quite a few laps, Brock, until uh, suddenly got so much pressure from Tommy Riggins uh, that he got off in the dirt and spun it a bit. And here is that leader car off fences. So Felton in second, Bruce Nesbitt and Irv Hare aren't far behind either one of them. We'll be back to Road America for more Kelly American. The second position will be Gene Felton. Picking up third spot should be Irv Hare. Here is Felton right now across the line as on the victory lap goes car number 12. In fact, right now, let's go to Brock Yates, who is with our second-place finisher, Gene Felton. Well, Gene, you told me you had some surprises in store for him with that old Oldsmobile, and uh, it sure came true. Yeah, Brock, we uh, we played around with it a little bit this morning after qualifying, and we got the stutters out of it. Uh, we got going so fast, we forgot to pay attention to the brakes, and we lost our brakes early in the race. I guess that's a big problem here. Uh, a couple of places where you really got to use them up hard, huh? Yeah, really. It's the first time we've run this car for a uh, you know hard race this year, and we just uh, have not paid attention to the brakes. And this is uh, about 170 mile an hour straightaway in the back, and cars weigh about 3,100 pounds. It's just hard to stop them down. So we lost the brakes, but we were lucky to hold on to second place. Uh, Tommy just uh, just kind of muscled you out of the way uh, and, uh, and, and got you off in the dirt. Is that what happened? Yeah, I, I had to back out early, and he got inside of me, and uh, I made a mistake and left him a little room on the inside, and he took the road and left me the dirt. But that's all fair in, uh, in racing. Well, I said, uh, Lynn St. James and I were watching the race, and I said, boy, I'll tell you, that, that Oldsmobile is going to get awful wide, but it didn't get quite wide enough at one point. No, nah, I was playing the game the way it should be played, and uh, that's okay. I think I might have done the same thing had I been in Tommy's seat. Uh, uh, he's got one coming from me. We'll get, we'll, we'll catch him the next time. <laughs> okay, I know you will. Thanks, Gene, and congratulations on a good, strong race. Yeah, There's no place, and uh, that's probably the way Bruce Nesbitt feels about his third. Gene Felton, Irv Hare, and Clay Young round out the top five behind Tommy Riggins, and a good, solid run. But that's not all. We